Jennifer and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make some DIY patches. Patches have been a huge trend this year so I decided to make a DIY version of them because sometimes I can't find the ones that I like or sometimes they're super expensive and sometimes I just like DIYing things. I'm going to show you guys two methods. I didn't put my fingers up. I'm gonna show you guys two methods to making them, so hopefully one of you guys know what am I saying. If you like this video, make sure to like it. Not just emotionally. Subscribe if you want to see what I post next. Make sure to turn on post notifications by tapping the bell so that you know when I upload next. And send me a picture if you try this out. And without further ado, let's get started. So this is probably one of my most favorite videos I've ever filmed, and I'm literally so excited to show you guys how to make these patches. So I'm first gonna show you guys how to make some no sew patches and I just made these three so what you're first gonna need is some kind of thick fabric so I chose denim because I have a lot of old jeans that I don't wear anymore or are too small so I just cut that up I'm taking the back side of the jean material and drawing on with a sharpie my eye design which I searched up on Google if you're not good with drawing don't worry I'll show you guys a method later on but now I'm taking some fabric paint or acrylic paint it doesn't really matter which one unless you're gonna be washing these patches if you are gonna be washing them for any reason I would recommend using fabric paint so I'm painting obviously the eye part white and then instead of using some black paint I'm just using a sharpie to color it in because it's just easier that way then I'm taking some blue acrylic paint and doing the iris part and going back in with my sharpie and just cleaning up all of the lines so once you're done with your design go ahead and just roughly cut it out now to make the actual iron on part I'm using some hot glue I'm basically just squeezing it over the back of the design and spreading it out with my nozzle this is only if you want to be able to iron your patch on it's not obviously perfect it's not exactly like iron-on patches are but it's kind of similar and it works so once I'm done putting all my hot glue on I'm going to just let that completely dry and cool and then I'm gonna take my scissors and just cut out along the design you can cut right to the edge of the design or you can leave a border it's up to you then I'm taking my sharpie and just covering the edges just so that it looks more like a real patch. And now I'm taking some fabric glue and just gluing the edges so that they don't fray. You can also use hot glue, but I would recommend using fabric glue if you have that. And that is the eye patch. Moving on to the lips one, I'm doing pretty much the same thing except just with a different design. So I searched up lips patch on Google and then I'm just freehanding that onto the denim. And then I'm painting that obviously using a white paint first and then going on top of that with red just because the color will pop a lot more. I'm gonna go in with some white paint and create these like white shiny things that were in the original picture and then going in with my sharpie to outline everything again just to make it look a lot cleaner and fill in all the black spots and I'm just gonna cut it out with my scissors. Once that is cut out I'm going to take my sharpie and just cover the edges once again and then use my fabric glue to just make sure everything doesn't fray. And these are all the patches that I made that were no sew. I think they turned out really great. Now moving on to the actual embroidered patches. So I'm gonna start out by doing the exact same thing as I did before by drawing out my design on some jean material. I'm actually gonna be doing an egg for this which I thought was really cute. So I'm actually gonna be painting that as a base just so that when I sew on top even if I miss a part you won't be able to really tell because there will already be color on the bottom but this is totally optional. So I just cut that out roughly and now I'm taking some white embroidery thread on my needle and just knotting off the ends so basically I'm making horizontal stitches for this egg so I'm basically doing the exact same thing to the whole entire egg by pushing my needle up through one side and then pushing it back down through the other side and if you find that you run out of thread in the middle of your design don't worry just cut that off and tie it in the back and start again with another piece of thread but just in the middle of the design here I am again pushing my needle up one side and pushing it back down on the other side so yeah yeah and since I had that little yolk in the middle I'm avoiding that with the white thread so I'm just stitching all around the yellow not gonna lie this does take quite a while but I actually found it quite therapeutic and calming I just sewed this while I was watching a show so once I was done with the white thread I just tied it off and moved on to the yellow so I'm doing the same thing <laughs> except just in a circle shape in the middle and I'm gonna tie that off in the back once I'm done with that thread now basically 
basically I'm just going to go ahead and outline the yolk with some black thread and what I'm gonna be doing is a back stitch so basically I'm gonna make a little tiny stitch and then push the needle back up a little bit farther from where the stitch ended and then push the needle back in through where the last stitch ended it makes like no sense in words but you can see what I'm doing on the screen and it's a lot easier than it sounds after I am done outlining the yolk and the entire egg I'm just gonna cut that out with a little bit of a border which was just my preference but you can cut right to the stitch if you want to and then I'm just going to put some fabric glue on it to prevent it from fraying so for this next method it's perfect if you're not good at drawing which right now I'm drawing a lightning bolt but we're gonna pretend like I actually printed this because it does not matter if you draw it or print it and then what comes next is the important part so once you have your design you have to go over it with a pencil very very hard trace it many many times make sure that you have a lot of buildup of the lead because we are going to be transferring this onto our denim so I'm gonna put that face down on my denim and basically go back and forth with my pencil making sure I press as hard as possible so that the image transfers onto my jean material if that makes sense I hope that makes sense and because it's a little bit faint I just went over that with my pencil and then also this thin sharpie but I would definitely recommend this method if you don't feel comfortable drawing one thing to be careful of is if you're gonna be doing a word or a phrase you have to print your letters backwards in order for it to be transferred the right way onto the fabric now I'm using this light yellow embroidery thread and I'm just going to be embroidering the entire main section of the lightning bolt then I'm going in with a darker yellow and I'm embroidering the little 3d parts of the lightning bolt the exact same way that I showed you before and then I'm just going to outline the lightning bolt with some black on the outside and also the inside parts by using a back stitch which I also showed you guys before and then I'm taking my fabric glue and lining along the black threads and then I'm just gonna cut that out making sure not to cut any of the black threads and that is it that's how you make your embroidered patches so these are all of my patches all together you can see I made six in total now I'm gonna show you guys how to attach these to whatever you want to if you guys watched my DIY school supplies video you guys would have seen how I made this denim pencil bag I will link it on the eye in the top right corner or in the links below but I'm going to iron on this patch first because it's the iron on patch what I'm gonna do is place another piece of fabric on top I'm just gonna use this cotton shirt so because this is hot glue it heats up pretty fast I only left my iron on there for about 10 to 20 seconds but the key is that after you're done ironing you have to leave it there for about like 30 seconds until it cools because once you take your iron off it's still gonna be hot and that means that the hot glue is still gonna be really flexible and it's not gonna be stuck down yet you can also just like push the patch down with your hands just to make sure that it's stuck down or if it's too hot you can use something to flatten it down if you don't want to make these iron-on patches don't worry you can just glue it on basically using some hot glue or fabric glue whatever glue you want to use I just want to show you guys another method of making iron-on patches if you don't have those I don't know what those iron-on thingies are called but I don't I literally don't know what I'm talking about those are all the patches if you do make any of these make sure to tweet me or Instagram me at generation DIY some pictures because I would love to see you guys recreations <gasps> I should make a Sean Mendes patch I should I'm I'm actually gonna go do that right now okay bye so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did make sure to like it subscribe and that is pretty much it I will see you guys next time bye